Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Liza. Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing a wrap up. So I have not filmed a wrap up I think since February and so it's been a while. I didn't really read a whole bunch in March but I did read a pretty significant amount in April since I did my 100 pages challenge then. And so I figured that what I would do in order to play a little bit of catch up is I would combine the two videos together and make it like an April, March kind of a wrap up deal. And it also just like saves y'all some time as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first book that I read in March was called The Double Duty Trap and this is by Tiffany Dufu. Now this was really an interesting book. I got it on free from Audible and I started listening to it. I've been really into the Audible workshops and speeches lately like for self-development and so I thought that it would be a fun thing to try out. Now this book specifically tackles the idea that women specifically in office workplaces there's like this unspoken rule that women should do more work that isn't necessarily going to benefit them career-wise long term. So what I mean by that is she talks a lot about how people just kind of naturally put jobs on women that aren't really things that they want to do and the expectation is that the women will do them quickly and efficiently because that's kind of like what they've always done in a sense. So one of the examples she gave was like a receptionist throwing an office party and she does one office party and she plans it and she you know coordinates everything and she does the decorations and she goes out and she gets the food and she does all that stuff but honestly it's not really something that's going to help her career it's just something that other people have put on her that she simply has to do so it was interesting reading about the culture of this because I suppose that I never really noticed that it was a thing. I worked as a receptionist for a little bit and so I could kind of see those things happening and I could see it being part of the workplace culture, but I didn't really know what to call it. And she did really good at being able to articulate it properly and show you the downfall of playing into that and doing those things. So she does a really good job in this book of rectifying the situation in the sense that she teaches you how to call people out on it. Like if somebody's putting something on you that's not necessarily yours to do, like an office party, she shows you how to call attention to it without being confrontational about it. So I really enjoyed this book. I thought that it was really fascinating because she was really articulate in the way that she described things, but she also didn't put people off with the writing. Ultimately, I really ended up enjoying it and I ended up giving it four out of five stars. Now the next book that I want to talk about is called Star Child and this is by Camille Acker. I believe I did a reading vlog on this and it was pretty fascinating. The subject matter was interesting to me. It follows the story of this woman and her mother starts acting a little bit erratically at her friend's funeral and the book basically follows her relationship with her mother as she begins to believe that her mom is going crazy. It was very interesting and it dives really deeply into the dynamics of families and grief and I thought that it was pretty good. The only issue that I really had with it was the ending. I thought that the ending was a little bit bizarre, but I enjoyed the writing style and I enjoyed the character development as a whole. And ultimately I ended up giving this book a solid three stars. So the next book that I wanna talk about is Letting the Cat Out of the Bag. And this caught my attention because it was by an illustrator that used to work for Buzzfeed and the entire series just follows this cat and his different adventures and all of the issues that he causes for his owner. I wasn't a huge fan of the art style when I first started it out, but it really grew on me pretty quickly and the humor of it really caught my attention. 
I ended up really enjoying it ultimately. I read it on Scribd and so it was a pretty quick read and ultimately I ended up giving it three out of five stars. So the next book that I want to talk about I also did for the 100 pages challenge and that's A Hundred Ghosts, A Gallery of Harmless Haunts. And this was interesting. This was basically a book that I just kind of picked up because I wanted to get my page count up real quick for the challenge that I was doing. But I got really surprised and I ended up really enjoying the book. So the idea of this book is that it's a picture book that follows different types of ghosts and why you shouldn't be afraid of them. There's hardly any dialogue in it and the art is very simple and easy to read. There's a lot of jokes in it that are really funny. I ended up giving it a pretty solid three out of five stars and I would definitely read it again. So the next book that I want to talk about is A User's Guide to Neglectful Parenting. This is by Guy Diesel and he's a French illustrator and memoirist. And I've read parts of his other books before. I have Hostage on my bookshelf. And he also did a memoir where he was in Jerusalem that I really wanted to read for a while. So I figured this is one of his earlier works and I really wanted to pick it up and see what it was about. It ended up being absolutely hilarious. It follows the story of him as a father and how he raises his kids in different situations that he gets himself in. It was really cute and it had a little bit of like dark humor to it even that kind of gave it this edge. I ended up really liking it. I wasn't super big again on like the art necessarily, but it ended up growing on me the longer that I read it. So ultimately I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four out of five stars. So the last book that I have to talk about is actually a sequel to a book that I had seen about 10 years ago in a bookstore. And I remember it being really funny because my friend at the time was laughing about it and she picked it up and started reading it. And that book is going to be All My Friends Are Still Dead. This is kind of a spinoff on a dark humor dinosaur book that a child might pick up. It's really interesting and it's really funny. It goes off of the sequel of the first book, which is All My Friends Are Dead, and it continues the dinosaur story as he looks around with all of his friends and realizes that everybody that they know has died. It seems super dark and it seems really twisted, but it's actually really funny and I really ended up enjoying it. I ended up giving it about three out of five stars. So I hope you guys enjoyed my wrap up and I'll talk to you guys later.